Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's now, brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to take because I am a seed of every good. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome again to When Christmas Be Talk Radio. I'm Reverend Ray. Amen. Today's broadcast, of course, is um, the bread of life. I'm so glad to be here with you on this Sunday. Amen. I pray that you had an awesome and wonderful day. Amen. Uh, we're about to get started in a few minutes. Amen. I'm just going to do a couple things. Amen. I'm going to play a couple of announcements. Amen. There will. Go ahead and please get started. Um, our topic today, um, God's commitment to us and our commitment to him. And, uh, actually, we come out of several, several scriptures. I pray that you can hear me. Um, Chronicles 7 and 14 will be one. Amen. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead and open up in prayer first, okay? So, Father God, we thank you for today. Today is a brand new day, God. We thank you for day, being in a day. Um been in the land of the living. We give this broadcast to you and pray that you will come and have your way. God, we open up our understanding, God. We pray, God, that you will pour into our life, Lord Jesus. Those things that need to be, be, be done, God. We forever give you all the praise and all the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Reverend Ray. Today's broadcast is the bread of life. Amen. I believe the Reverend Robin is with us today. Uh, Reverend Robin, are you with us? Yes, I am, Reverend Ray. Bless God. I'm so glad mm-hmm. to be joining you this evening. Looking forward to your topic. It's an exciting one. Amen. Amen. So, so we're going to do a couple of things first, and uh, we'll be right back. Amen. Amen. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Amen. Amen. Welcome back again. Yeah, this is one Christmas Speak Talk Radio. I'm Reverend Ray. I'm joined by Reverend Rob White. Again, it's such a pleasure, amen, to be able to speak uh, with you today. Again, our topic, amen, is God's commitment to us and our commitment to him. So this will probably be a series um, of, of, of different things. I'm not sure exactly how long it would take when I well, when I begin to write the notes and put everything together, I got a lot of scriptures, amen. But um, so what I want to do first, amen, is just thank you for joining. I thank Reverend Robin for uh, I asked on short notice to um, to join me here today, amen. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. Reverend Robin, I just want to, again, reach back out to you and say, how you doing? And for those that don't know, she's my cousin, family, so we, we go back a long time, amen. 
I'm doing well, Reverend Ray. I'm just thankful for this day that God has given us. And I'm just, you know, excited about your word because God is, truly has a commitment to us. He has a covenant with us, Lord God, and we, we are just blessed to have that. So I'm looking forward to this topic that you have selected and all that God has to share with us all on this evening. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, so of course I want to put it out to her. Just feel free to jump in at any point, okay? So um, this is us, not just me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I see my cousin smiling in the background. <laughs> Amen. Yes, <All> right. I am. <laughs> so the first scripture that I actually had that I'm coming from, I um, when I did some research. So I want to combine the two, and we're going to talk about God's commitment to us first, okay, and um, our commitment to Him, because I couldn't do one without the other, because this um, this this is a this is a partnership, this is a um, a relationship that we have with our Lord and Savior, okay. So it's not just one sided, okay. But there's a lot of promises that God gives to us, and everything like that, you know. And one of the first ones that I want to talk about is actually coming out of Second Chronicles chapter seven. And I'm, I'm, of course, I'm reading from the King James Version, okay? And it, it deals with, uh, with Solomon. And I'm going to actually start at the first verse. Like I said, I want us to take our time and do this. Amen, that you listen. And I want you to try to follow along with us also. I write some notes. And if you do have questions, amen, please feel free to, to um, you can uh, send those to me by going to uh, whenquestionspeak at gmail.com. You can send it to me like that. Or you can go to our, face, our, our different Facebook page and send us an instant message on Facebook, those kind of things, okay? All right. So it says uh, on Second Chronicles chapter 7, starting in verse 1, and the, um, the verse 6 talks about Solomon's prayer and, and, and things that he would desire from God, okay? It says, now, Solomon had made the end of praying. The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice. And the glory of the Lord in the yard filled the house. You know, I think last Friday we talked about uh, uh, that that your answer of prayer is that you don't try to report that. We talked about your answer of prayer is knocking at your door. It says the glory of the Lord came and filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Can you imagine? Oh, my God, right there, man. That's why I wanted to read all of this, okay? I didn't want to skip any of this at uh, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 7, okay? And it, says, <laughs> and it says, and when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord, and the, and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, okay? Saying, for he is good and for his mercy endures forever. For God is the spirit and his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the, the Lord. Okay, this chapter and the king Solomon offered a sacrifice uh, 22,000 offerings and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Okay, this, 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 this again is going back to the, the house of God, the, the, the temple had was built, everything was done, everything was in order, and everything like that. <laughs> and so the, the king, which means represent leadership, had prayed. The people was in an agreement. There were things that were taking place all right, <laughs> on, on the people's part. You know, so there are things that have to take place in, on, on our part or in our heart. Okay? And it says, and the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with the answer of music of the Lord, when David the king had made to praise the Lord, because his mercy endured forever. When David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all of Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. But there he offered burnt offerings. And the scent of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offering. <laughs> it was not able to take it. So he had to do something different, okay? And the meat offerings in the fat. And also at the same time, same time, Solomon kept the feast 
seven days in all Israel. And this is no small feat. This is no small thing that was going on here. Okay? <laughs> uh, they, uh, also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days and all of Israel with them. A very great congregation, you know. In other words, you can imagine thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people there from entering in of Hamlet onto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly, but they kept the dedication of it all the seven days, though, and three seven days. And on the, the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tent, glad and merry in the heart for the goodness the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people. Thus Solomon, Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came to Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prospered and effected. Okay? And the Lord appeared to him. Here we go. All right? Solomon did all these things before. Everything was in order. Uh, the <laughs> fire came down from heaven and consumed the offering. Okay? The people of all over the court. And here we go. Verse 12 said, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. And it says, verse said, If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send the pestilence among my people. Verse 14 says, If my people, <laughs> okay, which are called by my name, to humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and hear their land. And that ties both of those, those, those topics in God's commitment to us and our commitment to him. Okay? The, the key word is if. Okay? That means that we have a choice in the mind. You know, God committed, committed to us is not, it, 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 it's, it's, it's parallel to what we do first. God's commitment to us is important about what happens next. I don't know about you, but at this point in my life, I want to make sure, and you should want to make sure, that you are committed to God and God is committed to you. That he is in a place of vouching you <laughs> and <it> requires <laughs> in vouching you, you know, or, or, or saying to you, look, I can trust you. I, I'm putting all my my belief and faith in you to be obedient to the things that I have given you today. I'm putting all my faith in you to believe in the things that you're doing. Amen. Amen. So God is that's what it, this that's the first one. Now I got a whole list. Um, I went to a couple of websites and I got some more. I got my own notes and everything. That's why I said it's going to take some time. But before I go on, I want to just want to Reverend Robin. I'm just going to get you ask. Um, for some feedback for what I just read. Amen. You have anything to add? Amen. That is a powerful um, passage of scripture. And as we all know that the building temple at this time was, was so important at this time. And, um, and and as you said, they had seven days, seven days in which they just worshipped and they just gave forth feasts and, you know, and it, it is just awesome to think that, you know, we have some revivals, but it, it says that this was seven consistent straight days of worship, you know, just seven straight days of of just sharing in the love and, and, and the praise and, the, and the, the just the honor and worship of God. And that's what we were all created to do. We were created to worship him. You know, and, and imagine to have this house dedicated and, you know, and have his his glory just fill the temple. I mean, it says God's glory fill the temple. So we know this goes to tell us that if God's spirit is filling us, we can have such an awesome time of just praise and worship before him. And the thing of it is, which is so important and and is so significant, it is that it is not us, but it's first him coming unto us. And as he come unto us, worship cannot help but follow. And I think that is one of the 
key and crucial points. I mean, that is where you can say it has nothing to do with me, but I was touched and I was filled with something that's so beyond me that I had no other choice but to worship. So, yes, this is a truly a, an impactful and important, important passage of Scripture which refers to God's presence to us and what God's presence to us, how significant it is, how, how life-changing it is, how is God's presence in the Holy Spirit, you know, that glory being um, within us, not just amongst us, not just around us, but within us has that ability to do exactly what it says, a causation in our life of reaction unto him. Not of ourselves, but a reaction because he first initiated activity within us. He he first came. And so it's just like his, his, the scripture says that I love God because he first loved me. And it's the same thing. I worship God because he first came and, and, and presented himself unto me. He came that I was in his presence before him. So therefore, in my just an automatic response to the glory, a more automatic response to the spirit is worship. Amen. Amen. Amen, and I like I like thank you, uh, Reverend Robin. I think like what you just said, and I'm I'm, I'm going all the way back to uh, 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 chapter scripture number verse number two, and it, and it says that the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. You know, when I look at that scripture, is that there for the priest there was things that they had to get done, but they could not even do what they normally would get done because there was no need. The glory of the Lord was already there. And I think about when we when we have church at times, you know, that we so, uh, get so caught up in the structure of church that sometimes, um, um, and I know that when I was going, when I was well, dealing with the Tree of Life, Christian members, when she and the pastor, Rob James Roberts, I know that there were times that we would have church and we, there's always the offering, there's always, the uh, the uh, praise and worship and certain structures of things that will take place to order perfect. But sometimes the glory, in this case, something the glory level would come there. That where they couldn't take up an offering or whether there was no preach word that could be done because the glory of the Lord dictated what should be done next. Okay, the glory of the Lord, the Holy Spirit dictated what should be done next, and that's the freedom of allowing the Holy Spirit to operate uh, way past the structure or the program of what man does or the liturgical or what man does not. I mean, God just be God. Because that's what he does sometimes. There may be a time that in the church setting that God just says, look, I want all the Holy Spirit speakers, I want everybody to come to the altar. You know, I want everybody to worship, worship, worship God, you know, and stuff. And then there's times that, the, that even I, I've experienced at other churches there's times that the worship and the praise was so good that the only thing that could be done, the only thing that was left to do because it was God ordained, is they didn't listen no offering, is that the, the preach word came forth, okay? Because the heart of the people was ready to receive what God said the Lord, okay? But the praise, everything had to be in order. So with, with church uh, as leaders and of the body of Christ, that so we have to be in that position where we in tune to what God is saying to us, okay? We are going to be in tune uh, in our commitment uh, uh, to, to, to God and, and to worship and, and allow him to do what he sees fit, you know? Allow him to direct us in those things. That's why uh, the, the service, the order of service, and being open and not being uh, rigid to the point where, no, we got to do it this way and then we have to do it this but being open. Okay, and um, uh, I believe that a lot of churches are, are allowing the Holy Spirit to operate like that, you know, and uh, other people are allowing the Holy Spirit to operate in our lives like that. Not just the church, but even in our home setting, you know, there's sometimes that we have to change that a little bit so that God operates completely and unadulterated um, to the fact of what needs to be done in our lives, you know. There are times, even uh, as, as, as Robin, uh, Reverend Robert uh, knows that he may wake us up at the field of 4 o'clock in the morning with a desire to worship or a desire to pray. 
And we have to be able or willing to be able to say, yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do. You know, I'm willing to do just that. I'm willing to praise you and to worship you like that. Amen. 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 So Amen. I, I'm so glad Reverend Robin went over, over those things. Did, did you have something else, Robin, before we move on? No. You good? I'm good. You can, we can continue on. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Another, uh, cause another scripture that I've, I've come to mind um, is coming out of John chapter 3, uh, 16. It says, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his son and only son, that whosoever believes in him should perish but have everlasting life. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have, a, have everlasting life. Well, God committed, committed to us to the point where, you know what, I'm going to send my son because I love the world that much. I love my creation that much. Everything I created, I looked at it and it said it was good. <laughs> Every single thing, it was good. Even though he knew that man would fail. Even though he knew that the, the serpent was going to uh, <laughs> get eat the bite, the bite of the fruit. Even though he knew that they, Eve and Adam would bite of the fruit. And even though they, they were so those he knew all the details of every single thing because he's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end, you know. You know, he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent. He knew all these things. He still yet was willing to send his son because he wanted man to come back into a right relationship with him, okay? He still was willing. His commitment was to, okay, his commitment to us. Uh, to mankind, the truth. Okay? So he gave his word. For God so loved the world that he gave his son and only son. And whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And then there was a after that. Jesus was willing to die for us. Okay? A lot of times we know what 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 was done so that we can have a right um, to, to the tree of life. So we can have life, but not just life. Life. Well, abundantly, he was willing to die. The commitment he had go to a cross. I don't know whether I could have did it, did it or not. Thank God. <laughs> most of us, most of us couldn't do it. You know, I don't know. I, I think of it, I know. Like, no, you know, he went to the cross knowing the agony and the pain and the the uh, dishonor. You know, because any man that knelt of uh, this. Put, Put the death on a on a on a tree is cursed. He went uh, to the cross, knowing all of that that they would there would be something that betray him. That they would call him every ugly name they will. They would call him Beelzebub. He went knowing all of that. Even though no matter how many miracles they that he performed and how many people that he fed, the commitment that he had for us was still there. The commitment, even in the garden. You know, when he sweated, the Bible says he sweated as as great drops of blood. Even when he said, he said, Father, <laughs> it will be your way. Let this will, let this, this cup pass. You know, even after all of that, that came, I'm never the last. The commitment, y'all, for us to be in right and close relationship with God again. For us to be a friend of God. For us to be, um, uh, to be, um, uh, uh Kings and, and to be joint, air, and joint heirs and laborers of it. The commitment, the relationship that God and His Son and the Holy Spirit had for us to be in that type of place, to be able to have that relationship like in the beginning we had with Adam before the fall of man. The commitment that it took. He knew exactly what he was going to go through. He knew the thing and what he was going to have to endure. He knew on the cross of all the sins of the whole world, the both the past, the future, the, the present, and the future will be on him. He knew that the government was going to be against him. He knew the leaders of the time. I don't care how many times the pilot washed his hands. <laughs> he knew all of this. He knew what the potential, but yes, still he was willing. The commitment the promise of to keep that which his father had given to his hand. He was willing to do it anyway. You know? He was willing to do do it anyway. And there, there, some people say that 
when he was on the cross that he was isolated by, from God and because God doesn't look on okay, I don't know about all that. I just know for, for a fact that uh, <laughs> even on the cross, you know, he told one, one person on the cross, he said, um, <laughs> this day you'll be in we be with me in paradise. You know, he, then he said again, he said, Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they doing when it was um, accusations. And also, even on the cross, y'all, he was still doing ministry. Even while he was stuck with the commitment to stay there and to endure and to, to hold on and to, you know, and to even make words that I third or to, 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 to you know, I, mean, I was trying to explain to someone what Christ went through before he even got to the cross. The commitment to still follow through, even though he, he was beaten and everything, with many strikes. But what the, we don't uh, sometimes understand about the strikes that he was doing, there was, there was um, nails on the end of the strike, so that when they hit him, it ripped actually the flesh. You know, there was no like, no, look like, oh, look, the switches or whatever that we got. No, these things was ripping up the flesh. Even with that, with the amount of blood that he lost before he even got to the cross and everything like that. All that, the commitment to I'm gonna stay the course. I'm doing it for 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 Robert and for Ray and for <laughs> Andrew and for some of the other people that have not even been born yet, you know. I'm doing it for those kids that don't even have a name yet. They're not even a thought in their in their parents' mind. I'm I'm doing it and everything, you know, for them to Just 
you know, even just to go on in that scripture, you know, even I know you read John three sixteen, but to read John three seventeen, it says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world mm-hmm. through him might be saved. You know, he came in because he had a mission, he had a purpose. Because men was you know, without Jesus we all just die. I mean, so you know, I know one of your scriptures is Romans 5. I, I got to we get to that. I mean, but he came so that man does not die. You know, because even unto Moses, the, the scripture says in Romans 5, all have died. You know, but yeah. then from Moses until we get to the New Testament, there was just law. And law was never able to keep men. Law was never able to truly save men. Law was just an atonement for sin, but it was nothing about the sin. But it was through Jesus that we might be saved. And saved from what? Our souls saved from the sin. That the sin will not be something that with it stands between God and I, you know, and God and you. It's just that now that we have an open doorway directly into the spirit. You know, in verse 18 says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Now, that's something where we have to stop and think because we have to remember, you know, that, that God says he already know all who is his. He already know all who will believe, you know. And it says that um, already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And when it already says that he came so that men all would be saved and none shall be perished. But even with that, having that open way, having that way of redemption, having that way that we can walk and there is no condemnation, you know, having that Savior, you know, having that place where we can go in and we can be changed and, and a place not only where we can go in and be changed, you know, but in if we look at um, John 10, it's in, let's see, if I believe in or let me see, read and begin at 7, John 10, 7, it says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pastures. You know, that means that we can we can walk in and out of the things of this world. We can walk, you know, into God. We have free movement through this earth because we have it through that door. We have it because we have the good shepherd looking out upon us. That although we are in this world, we know that we're not of this world, but we have the freedom of pasture to move throughout because we have Christ Jesus and, and we have a salvation, you know, that we have the ability that we can just move with the freedom to go wherever it is that that we need to do. And, you know, there is, you know, just that one way to salvation. There's that that one way into heaven, and that is that door that is through Jesus Christ. You know, that is through an intimate relationship with God. You know, that is the way in which we can go through Jesus Christ. And, And not only is that in an atonement, you know, but there is a cleansing for us. There is a cleansing that we can not only walk in and out, but we can go forth. And because in John 10, 10, it says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I come. Now, this is Jesus saying. He came and he gave up his life. Come that they might have life and they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And we know that that is exactly what Jesus has done. Jesus has come to be our protector. He has come to be our redeemer. He has come and he has given a redemption. He's our propitiation. He is our covering for that very thing that separated us, that very thing that kept us from moving freely into the presence of God, that very thing that prevents us from moving and receiving that glory of God that was spoken of, that prevents us from having that Holy Spirit, that very thing that Jesus came in to remove, and that was that sin that that just holds us back. But he says he is the good shepherd. 
And that is that when they come to steal, kill, and destroy, we have a good shepherd who comes to block all of that, who comes to prevent all of that, so that we can have a way until salvation and we can have a way until life that is more abundantly. You know, he is, you know, he came. He's like, he, he wasn't a hireling. You know, that's what it says in 1212. But he comes to his own. He comes to those that God has said, you have to go and save those that are mine. You know, and it, you know if we go back to John 3, um, and it says there that I'm going to read it at 19. It says, and this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and the men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. But for everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But for us, you know, it says, but the day that doeth the truth cometh to the light, and his deeds may not be made manifest, for they are wrought in God. You see, and if we can all just know that if we come to that good shepherd, all of those things, you know, all of those things get get buffed out, you know, all of those things get purged and cleansed. Or, you know, but he says that, that there, he knows that there are some who, 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 will not come out of the darkness because they love the darkness. But yet and still Jesus came so that none shall perish and that all shall be able to have everlasting life. And it is that everlasting life that that good shepherd comes to give us. You know, he is a good shepherd. He is the superlative shepherd, which means that it is beyond what this, you know, the shepherd is the example as the protector. But not only that, the, 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 the natural shepherd you know, kind of protects the sheep here, you know, but the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, not only protects us, but we don't have to worry about death ever. You know, it's not even something that is our concern or our care because he has drawn us into a marvelous light. He has drawn us into the kingdom because he says the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. So therefore we can go in and out and we can live victoriously and we can live abundantly through Jesus Christ because of his commitment to us. And it's only because he commits to us that we are so willingly and able to commit unto him because we, within him there is a life without any con- condemnation. There is a life of freedom. There is a life of abundance. There is a life where we can be purged of all things that are unlike him. That, and it's not for us to do, but it's his work that he does in our lives. So it is so important when we look at John three sixteen that that we go and look, and he says that he's so loved. It was so much of his love that he didn't want any of his who, to, to, to die. And what we're not talking about just a physical death, but we're talking about a spiritual death. You know, we you know you don't want them to die without the spirit, and that is the spiritual death because that is what mankind has without being reborn unto Jesus. That means that your spirit can be reborn, and so He came so that we could have life and have life forevermore and have life more abundantly, that we don't die in our sin and therefore always die separated from from Christ and separated from God so that we cannot enter in and move freely about. So it's it's, it's just a blessing. It's that there is a two-way commitment. There's a two-way commitment. But you know what? Our only commitment is to believe that he is who he is. It is in our belief in who he is that then we get all of his covenant, that we get all of his grace, we get all of his mercy, we get all of his healing. I mean, we get his propitiation for everything in our lives. You know, we get to be reborn. We get to be renewed. We get to be refreshed. You know, we get to see out of a different eyesight. You know, the scales are dropped off. We open up to a marvelous light, and we see the world through a different lens because now we are into the kingdom of God, and we can move freely through this world because we can enter in and out of the kingdom at will and know that the door is always open because we have Jesus Christ as our doorway. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Robert. I, mean, I, I love what you uh, what, what you speaking on. One of the things that I thought about is come, actually coming out of Romans chapter 10, verses 9. It says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe, it goes back to that, the words that you mentioned earlier, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay? For those that are wondering 
how how to get started. I don't I don't know where you are, are right now. Maybe you're in a place that that um that has you locked up, or you are uh, uh, in some type of either whether formal um, um, prison or spiritual prison where you don't know what to do, and you see you're surrounded by uh, those that are against you, and you're in the enemy's camp, so to speak, and everything. But I know a, a Lord and Savior that can bring bring you out of those prisons. I know that the Lord and Savior, that this time that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe in your in your and, and believe in your heart that that God raised him from the dead and then everything, that He will begin to do something miraculous in your life. I know that, Amen. That He would do those things. I know that for a fact. All right, because that's what He did. You know, like Rob, Reverend Robert said earlier that He knows who who Jesus knows who the Father knows who belongs to Him. Not everybody is going to be saved, unfortunately. Not everybody is going to see uh, this grace. That is free, y'all. It's free. It's free, okay? Not everybody is going to see That's unfortunate, you know, because we have uh, we have a choice to make. You know, we choose to decide who we will serve this day, you know? We choose. We make a choice. We make a determination and everything like that. But our choices sometimes in situations do have consequences. I would rather my consequence consequence be a better uh, you did a good work. <laughs> you didn't always get it right. You were faithful over a few things. It means I missed some things. I was faithful over like, uh, there at the crown of right. I'd rather be in that situation than be in the other. Um, to be in the other situation where I had an opportunity to you know who Jesus Christ was and I, I had a choice to receive him and stuff is because I was an atheist or uh, because I believed that there was no higher power. I just see that I decided to make myself God. Uh, I'm talking about not me in particular, but we decided to make ourselves God to I'm God of my own life. No, I'd rather choose him, you know. Me personally, I'd rather choose him. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, it says, but it is by grace you have been saved. There ain't nothing that you did. It does, it's, 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 I don't care how many um, <laughs> how many times did your grandmother and your mother prayed for you and how many times you went to church and you on a deacon board and you're on an usher board and uh, you've been preaching for 30 years and you, yeah, but if you don't have any, the Holy Spirit within you, I, it, 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 let me back up. You don't, you don't, you've been doing all those things at that church or religious and everything and everything. But, it, but, but where's Where's the fruit of it? Where's the fruit? Where's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, there are people that have done all those things. It's not let me for it and not going to make it to heaven. Because he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. You did those things in a mess. You did those things because you felt like it was the right thing to do. You did those things to get edification from the people. The people that say, oh, you, you preached a good word or you. They just you did those things all for the wrong re- reason, but your heart was never really in Christ. That's why it's important that it goes back like, to believe in your heart. That's how he that's how he knows who belongs to him. You know? He look at us, y'all, and he see a reflection of himself. You know, that's just my that's my own person thing. But he see a reflection of his, of his of his spirit that's in you. That's how he knows. So but it says what let me go back to the scripture, Ephesians chapter two, verse eight that says for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. This is nothing that you did. This is you 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 can't do enough to get to them make it a heaven. You know, it's not about your work and everything like that. It's not. You know, your works are fun, but it's about your your faith. It's about your the, the grace that God has given you, given us, you know, to go beyond anything that we can even imagine. The song said, I can only imagine <laughs> what it would be like, you know. I can only imagine, you know, you know. So we have to go past those things. Yes, we, we are responsible for our deeds and things that we do and everything, but let me have that right relationship uh, with Christ. Let me get one thing, a few things right. <laughs> be faithful over a few things, okay. It says, it is the gift of God and not by work, so that no one can boast. Because man in his own flesh will begin to boast. Oh, I got this, and I got did that, and I'm accomplishing this, and I got this in the bank account. You know, we begin to boast, and uh, and God said, I, I'm not sharing my my glory with no man, with no one. You know, 
You know, so there has to be in, in, in this relationship or in this intimacy with Christ, y'all, we almost all the time. There has to be a point where there has to be a humility. I can speak for myself. You know, God had to humble me, man. You know, there was a point in my life that I had to be placed in a position of being, of humility, of being humble and everything like that because I was headed in the right way. Lord, correct. The prayer becomes, God, correct me before I go in and pray. <laughs> If there's any correction you can get to be taking place in my life, if there's anything, examine me. What's my real motivation? Why am I doing this? God, am I doing this for your glory or if I'm doing it for the glory of men? Am I doing it for the glory of a, 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 a accomplishment? God, I mean, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to myself, but I'm speaking in general, y'all. We have to examine everything. You know, we have to, you know, try the spirit by the spirit. We have to know people that, you, that is among us. You know, because there's motives that are not always Christ like that involved. Even the people that we said that we love. Even, I don't care, preachers, pastors, bishops, apostles, prophets, all, all the above. You know, the, uh, one of the things that I've learned many years ago is to watch. Just watch people. Get to know them. They'll show you that their true selves will come out. True selves will come out. Okay. Again, we're going to read the scripture. It says, but it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. That, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, but not by works, so that no one can boast. Okay. And uh, John, First John chapter five and eleven. One other time, we'll get to a few more of these scriptures, and then I'm going to back up with Reverend Robert. It says, and this is the testimony: God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. You know. This this light is in the sun, you know. We can't get to the Father unless we come, come through Him. Okay, what somebody is teaching you and everything that you know that kind of stuff. But you need to get this light. Look, Jesus, I'm coming directly to you, and I know I can't get to the Father unless I come to you. So I'm praying to you, help, help, Jesus, help me. I need you today. <laughs> That's what our prayer. You know, our prayer. Our prayers should be like that. Hell, especially if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know. We, 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 I, I desire, God desires, from, as Reverend Robert said, that no man perish, you know. It's, it's not his desire that any man perish. And, and yes, the music of the word, but we're talking about men and women, children, you know, all the way. No one, God desires not anyone to perish, you know. Hell wasn't... Um, um, Really made for us, yeah. You know, it was made for the devil, for certain. But the scripture talks about how it's in the lodging and stuff every day. You know, it wasn't made for us. It wasn't made for us. You know, it wasn't made for us. God desired you to live. You know, not just a physical life, but a spiritual life too. You know, He desires that relationship um, with with us, like He had before. You know. I always think in my mind, what would it be like? I mean, we can't imagine, right? What would it be like to walk in the garden in the cooler day with God and and, and and he began to show us the allegories and the mysteries of his creation? There are things that we would never know about with his creation because we can't comprehend it. It's behind, behind, it's above our, our brain power. This is what I was saying until we get to glory. Oh, wow, this is a, 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 the, the smallest detail. To the mightiest teacher, all those things are mighty. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm going to give it over to you to close this out and um, any last words and that kind of thing. Okay? Okay. Oh, bless the Lord. So I just I just thank God for just this, for Jesus, because Jesus is our answer to all things. You know, Jesus says he is the doorway. He is the doorway to life. He gave up his life. You know, he shed his blood so that we could have life. And it says to have life more abundantly. And it is truly through Jesus that we live our lives. If we just can really just live our lives, let go of ourselves and let go of all of these things that really cannot keep us, that really does not give us that really contentment and joy um, as it, it's all dressed up in the glitter. It, it really doesn't do it, you know, no matter what it looks like. You know, it, you know the money, the the relationships, you know, the wealth, the power. Even having all of those things, because there are many people who have 
all of those things. They are lacking nothing materially. They are lacking nothing earthly. They are lacking nothing worldly. But yet and still, there is a lack deep in their soul. You see, but it's only Jesus who can feel the very fiber of us, the very fiber of our makeup. And as you remember from our makeup, you know, we were formed from, from, from the dust. But first we were spirit. You know, then we were soul, and then we were, we were flesh. I mean, so we have a makeup, you know, that brings us to an, a, the oneness of who we are because we are not what we see and all the trappings and all of the things on the outside. We are truly who we are on the inside. And if those inside things that the spirit is not reborn, if your soul is not at rest, if your heart is not at rest, if your mind is not at rest, if those places are not at rest, you don't have a peace. I mean, the flesh is always going to make you think that it can give you all the trappings and all the tremors, but it's only through Christ Jesus can we ever have a soul that is satisfied, a soul that is satiated, a mind that is renewed, a mind that is and that is rid of condemnation, a mind that is rid of worry, a mind that is that is a rid of fear, the mind that is just does not have the unrest. And all of these things are found in Christ Jesus. That is his commitment. He says he gave his life so that none shall perish. And often that perish, we can't just think about the physical death of our body, but that perishing is deep in our soul. So he came for the salvation of souls. And there is nothing that can complete and fill us to the very soul but Jesus Christ. So I thank God that he committed to the salvation of my soul and the salvation of your soul because he wants us to live an abundant life. And truly an abundant life is not lived with the trappings of the world, but an abundant life is lived within where it cannot even be seen. But you are walking around and people will know that there is something different about you. You may not have all of the the greatest and the latest, but there is something about you that has you in a place of contentment, a place of peace, a place of joy, a place of worship. It's the same place that even after seven days of worship, it's the same place that when they went home, it said in Second Chronicles, that when they went home, they went home merry. They went home rejoicing. They went home excited because when you have the glory of the Lord, when you have the spirit of the Lord, your insides, you are merry. You are excited. You full of joy. So we thank God that Jesus came so that we can all have that. And that is what he desires to give. And all we must do is simply believe. That our commitment to him is to believe in who he is. And in believing in who he is, he gives us life eternal. He gives us a salvation. He gives us the, 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 the passage. We get kings keys to the kingdom where we can move freely about. So that is a blessing. Amen. Bless the Lord. Reverend Ray, did you want to close us out in prayer? Uh, you, you can go ahead. All right, bless the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity just to lift your name up on high. Because you said if, if you be lifted up, that you would draw all men unto you. So, Lord God, we just send this prayer out. We send this time out, Lord God. We pray that you will continue to move forth and have the salvation of soul. Father, we pray right now for all of those, Lord God, who are listening, Lord God, that, that you would turn a switch, Lord God, that you would turn the light on, Lord God, that they their belief, Lord God, will be pricked, Lord God, that they will move closer unto you, that they will see, Lord God, that there is something better yet out there, that there is something that is for them that can give them true peace, true contentment, Lord God, a place where they can be loved beyond measure, be loved in a manner in which they have never been loved before. And Father, I just thank you, Lord God, even now, Lord God, that you are a loving God and you have sent your son, Lord God, that that none shall perish, that you love so much that you gave your only son because you desire that none perish, Lord God. So I pray, Lord God, that, that you, Lord God, will, will just 
um, pour out your skin, to draw men unto you, Lord God, that they will hear something and it's pricked in them, Lord God, and they will look to see what must I do to receive this Jesus. Does Jesus love me? Yes, Jesus loves you too. He came for you and he desires to give you salvation. He desires to give you a love that is beyond your imagination. He desires to take your life and turn it around. He desires to give you a new focus, a new lens, a new outlook to see. He desires that you will be able to walk in a manner of peace, walk in a manner of hope, walk in a manner of knowing that you are not alone, but you have a good shepherd. And having that good shepherd, there is no lack in your life. There is no situation in your life that can touch you. There is nothing that can come and steal you away, that he can protect you from harm and danger, that he can stop the mouth of a lion, that he can bring you through a fiery a fiery inferno and you will not be touched. All he asks is that you just only believe that he is able to do so. So, Father, I pray right now in any area of unbelief, Lord God, that you would sear it, that you would cut it off, that you would burn it up, that we will be walking in a place of belief that is beyond imagine, that our faith that you give unto us as a seed, Lord God, that we will fan it, Lord God, that we will nurture it, Lord God, that it will grow, Lord God, to a huge tree, Lord God, that we will stand steadfast and unmovable in our belief in you, in our trust in you, in our faith in you, in knowing that you are God and you are God above all things, that every principality, every power, every dominion, everything must bow unto you, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity just to speak on how great you are, just how marvelous you are, just how how loving you are, Lord God. Father, we speak it right now, Lord God, and we trust, Lord God, in the name of Christ Jesus, Lord God, that this word will go and it will fall on fertile heart, Lord God, on a fertile ground, Lord God, that it will penetrate, that it will give hope and encouragement, that for that one who is lost, Lord God, that they will know that you are no longer lost, that you have a home with Christ Jesus. All you must do is ask for him to reveal himself and he shall. So, Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for the soul that will be touched, the soul that will be saved, Lord God, by your son, Christ Jesus. And it is in Christ Jesus' name that we do pray and say amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Robin, for that awesome prayer and, and closing. Again, there was one you've been listening to life with Reverend Ray, and I've had Robin join me too. Our topic has been God's commitment to us and um, our commitment to him. Uh, we started off in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. We talked about a lot of different things, and then I pray that you would share the Share this broadcast with others. It's important that we realize that there God has commitment to us. Amen. Uh, that's the first part. This is probably going to be a series. I don't know what, what, how long it's going to be or what direction, but there's a lot of information to go over. Uh, so it's going to be a series of te- teaching. Amen. So I bless God for that. So again, this has been Chris, when Chris, when Chris and Speed Talk Radio. And please enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Amen. Your day. And, Keep on keeping on, keep on believing and trusting in the Holy God. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Robert. Thank you for joining. Amen. Thank you. God bless y'all. Amen. Amen. God bless. Everyone have a blessed evening and week.